Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Cutting Corners Vinyl, and today is Craftsmas Season 4, Episode 5. And we are going to be making this adorably cute bathtub board sign. Now, this episode was going to go sooner, but as you can tell, I have on no makeup, and if you see my face, it is broke out in this lovely rash, which is all over me, and it's been here for a while. I broke out in a rash from antibiotic steroid hmm. we're not sure but I'm going to the doctor Tuesday now I'm not on medicine I have an infection from my surgery and you know me there's always going to be complications but I just had a lot of Benadryl in my system so but I love how this came out. Isn't this beautiful? But hopefully y'all are going to love the tutorial. And if you want to find out how I made this, stay tuned. start off our bathtub board project. My board is already pre-cut and sanded thanks to my husband Jeremy. I'm not supposed to be around too much dust. So this is cut down to 11 inches by 26 inches and he rounded the corners for me. If you don't have the ability to cut that down, a lot of different lumber places, I think even Lowe's and Home Depot will cut them down for you. Now, I don't think they'll sand them, but they will cut them down. Now, that is pretty standard for like your builder grade, construction grade bathtubs, but you can make this any size that you want to. Now, I do have all the supplies that I am using that are available at Amazon listed down in the description box in my Amazon storefront and they are listed in the Craftsmas shopping list. I'm adding these to that list as the episodes go up. Now I'm not getting the episodes up as fast as I want to. Now I am using the unicorn spit stain. I love this stuff. They come in a lot of super fun color. I am using the sparkling colors in the shade Startling Sasha, Violet Vulture, and Sapphire Swift. They are water-based. So they're non-toxic. They smell really, really good. I've got a tiny bit of water some mixing bowls, and just some basic chip brushes. Now the chip brushes I am using, I buy those at Harbor Freight. They're extremely inexpensive and you can buy them in bulk. I think it's like $12 for like 50 of them. And one thing about it, as I'm doing this, if you're not happy with how it's coming out, you can just kind of wipe it away. Or you can take and add more water to it and blend it out. Like if you get a harsh line, anything like that, because they are water-based, you can take and add a little bit of water to it, even after it's dry, and blend out those edges. And kind of keep playing with this stain till you get it to be blended to the way that you want it to be. This is just what I like and you do not have to use the unicorn spit stain. I wanted it to be more of like a mermaid galaxy colorful look. <laughs> Christmas, all the happy smiles and the wishes, and I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe. Tell me one thing is there anything that you're missing? I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow. Whatever we do, we will be all right. These holiday wonders will open your mind. May all your wishes tonight come true. The love I live, the dream I knew. This Christmas, I only want to be close to you.
Christmas. It's a magical time full of kisses. Take a walk outside and tickle the snowman's nose. Moving nimbly, did you hear something from the chimney? I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow. As you can see, we sprayed the bottom of the board with white flex seal. I would have preferred it to be clear, but Lowe's only had it in the white or black, and I figured that the black wouldn't look the best on it. The reason why I wanted to do flex seal for it is because flex seal is more of like a rubberized coating, so it would have a nice grip to it on the bathtub so it wouldn't slip and slide around. Plus, it gives it a waterproof coating, so if it does get splashed, that water's not going to get absorbed into the bottom of the wood so it will protect the wood from the water and let's go ahead weave the paint mask now this design is available on my patreon page and i use my cricut to cut this and i use the washi tape setting that is a great setting for any of your thinner vinyls or like your more detailed vinyls it's great i like to use that setting on several different types of projects it is one of the main reasons I will continue to use like the Cricut machines. I will constantly continue to upgrade. Now, I do have an affiliate link in the description box if you're interested. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. So now we're going to go ahead and mask over our design, which is very easy to do. We just cut down the transfer tape, lay it over the top of it, squeegee it down. We're going to measure it out, lay it over the top of the board. You can see why I chose the washi tape setting for this, because you see those little tiny marks to make sure you could tell that those are supposed to be bubbles. That's why I used it. When I ordered my big order from Cricut the other day, you can see that that 26 inch ruler that I ordered is coming in handy because it's perfect for this board because it's the same size. So we've got our center. Go ahead and peel back just this top portion so we can work it down slowly. And we're gonna work it down a little bit at a time. Now that our stencil is all laid down, I'm gonna grab my dishwasher safe Mod Podge and a sponge stamp brush. It's just like a little round stamp brush. And I'm going to go over all of the edges. Now, the reason being I'm doing this is 
the stain is a water-based stain. And if I don't do that, then when I go to put the paint over the top of this, it's going to turn blue. And the paint that I'm using is a little bit thinner and it's gonna require several coats anyway, but it will require more. Two, it will help make sure there's no bleeding. So I won't have to worry about any of the edges not being smooth, anything like that. So I'm just gonna take this dishwasher safe Mod Podge and just stamp over all of the letters and all of the bubbles. Simple, easy, straightforward. We'll let it dry and then we'll come back and put our paint on it. And the good thing about the dishwasher safe Mod Podge is when it's wet, it's white so you can see where you put it. And we're ready to apply the paint. Now the paint that I am using is the Deco Art Dazzling Metallic in Pearl White. And I chose this because it's got a really pretty pearly finish. I'm using the same kind of pounce sponge brush. And I have my little paint palette. Now I love this thing, it came from Amazon. And it's really great because you can close it up and it keeps your paint fresh. And it's great to use whenever you're needing to apply several coats of paint so that way you're not wasting. I love it. And you can also have it because you've got, I'll use the big part for this, but you can also, it's got like little compartments. So if you're using a bunch of colors, it's nice. It's great. Now, by the time this is all said and done, I applied three coats of paint to get it to the opacity of color that I wanted to on this. I love how it came out. So now we're ready to remove the stencil. Now, for me, some people wait and try to move their stencil immediately, but I try to wait a good amount of time for this because when you're working with like your acrylics and things like that, I like to give this part a good amount of time to dry. And I'll just show you doing a little bit of this because this part takes quite a while, especially removing the centers. With this portion, the only thing you need is a good, sharp X-Acto knife, that type. And I use like a pick something along those lines to get the centers. If you have to get something started, that's what you need it for. But once you get your edge started, it should lift pretty cleanly. And your X-Acto knife is also good for like getting any little crumblies of your paint. Sometimes you might have to go in and touch up some of your edges, but for the most part, if you have your X-Acto knife cleaned up because around your edges, that's going to be your biggest hurdle and the centers. So this is what the board looks like, completely painted and finished. We applied two coats of the Minwax Polyurethane in gloss. I'm showing you the satin finish because Jeremy threw away the can, but I had some satin. So this is what it's looking like now. Doesn't it look pretty? So now I got to drill the holes for the handles. I have the guide that I ordered. It's a cabinet guide so I can measure out the holes. Hopefully I can do this right because this is not my forte. I'm never very good at doing like the drilling portion, especially making sure this is straight. Measure out where I want the handles on the front side, kind of where I want them to see exactly where they're going to go. And then we'll drill the holes from the back side. Now I'm going to use some masking tape on the front. Now the reason why I'm doing this is it's going to take and make sure my wood doesn't crack or splinter so it doesn't mess up all of my hard work. I did end up putting these holes in the wrong 
part. I'll have to have Jeremy go get some new handles because these this set of handles I got off of Amazon have a three inch hole pattern and I made the holes two and a half inches apart and I made them a little bit crooked. Here's the picture of the final board. Doesn't it look beautiful? So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. But I guess that's it for today and we will see y'all in the next one. I love y'all and bye!